Food systems do not exist in isolation, they depend upon our environment and changes in our climate and environment have an impact on our food systems. And likewise, our food systems can have an impact on the climate and the environment. So we'll explore that in the next few slides. First of all, how do we use the land? These hundred squares represent all of the land on Earth. Each one is about 1.5 million square kilometers. The green ones are the areas where we can live. It's the habitable land. The areas in grey are where we cannot, the ice and deserts and so on. So here's a question for you. Of that habitable land, how much do you think is used for agriculture? And how much do you think of it is used for the cities that most of us live in? Fifty percent of the habitable land is now used for agriculture. Bear in mind, 20,000 years ago, agriculture didn't exist. So during that time, we have converted 50% of our habitable land into agricultural purposes. 37% is forest, 11% is grassland, 1% is fresh water, our rivers and our lakes, and 1% is where most of us live. So agriculture takes up a big part of our land. If we look at this on a map, we can really get a sense of where agriculture exists. It's everywhere in our habitable land. And 77% of that is used for livestock and dairy, while only 23% is used to grow crops. Yet those crops provide the majority of the calories and the protein. So we have very different land uses that result in very different outcomes for food security. That land is managed by farmers. Here you can see a few of them in different settings. And those farmers have farms. So here's another question for you. How many farms do you think there are in the world? There are over 570 million farms in the world at our best estimate. It's quite hard to count. Most of them, 400 million, are less than one hectare, but they occupy only 8% of the agricultural land. So those smallholder farmers are the majority of the farmers just like that image we saw earlier on of the two ladies tilling the earth on a slope. And the distribution of farms and farmland worldwide is quite unequal. Our agriculture is very demanding of our fresh water resources. 70% of our fresh water is used for agriculture. And this graph is showing the different consumption rates in different regions of the world. But over 70% of fresh water for agriculture is a large proportion so you can imagine that there are increasing demands and competition between agriculture and industry and other uses. Our food systems have big impacts from climate. We know that, that there are changes in climate. Our future climate is going to be warmer. These two graphs are showing how extreme events, which are a very small part of the distribution of weather events, are going to become much more frequent in future. So these extreme events in our new climate will occur more frequently. And a small increase in average temperature of one or two degrees will lead to large increases in these extremes and the frequency of them. The impact of this on farmers is immense. Heat and drought stress will lead to lower production. Extreme wind and rainfall will lead to lower production. So what are the options the farmers have? They can change the type of crops or livestock that they have to be more capable of coping with that new climate. They can try to move the planting date earlier or later to avoid the worst impact of the extreme events during the season. They can improve their soil and water management. And in the last resort, they may have to abandon the land if it's simply no longer economically feasible to produce livestock or crops in those new conditions. Turning the equation around, we see that our food systems have a big impact on our climate. This graph is showing the percentage share of where our greenhouse gas emissions come from. And you can see that food and agriculture and the land use associated with that produces about a quarter of all greenhouse gas emissions right now. There are big changes. Agricultural emissions have been increasing in the last 20 years. And this is driven by the rapid growth in agricultural production, 
and the land use change associated with it. What we notice in these different production systems is that the emissions vary from system to system. Beef supplies, for example, 1% of the calories that we consume worldwide, but it accounts for 25% of all land use emissions.